Hi, this is Cindy at CindyBDesigns.com. Welcome to my second quick tip video. This isn't going to be so quick. I'm going to do it real time and we need to go over a couple things. This is separate from this card where we do that nautical knot. And I wanted to take you over the different types of well, products that you can use to make that kind of knot, what's going to work, what's not going to work. We have a Stampin' Up! Linen Thread, which is extremely thin, and my lens is way off. I'm going to zoom in because you got to see this. I mean, that is very, very thin. And it will get you this kind of knot right here. There's really not much to that. It just, it doesn't look like a nautical knot. It looks like a hot mess knot. So I don't think linen thread is the best idea. On this card right here, I used this type of, I don't know if it's rope, twine, it's stamping up. It retired years and years ago. I just had it on here, and this is what I used, and that's how this turns out, and it is in the video. So now we have other things, and I want to show you the difference in between those. So there's different products that Stampin' Up! offers you, okay, to do that not with. And this is all current a little bit. The colors may not be current, but the product is. This is the craft rope that I really wish that I had used. This is a current product. I know about, oh, six, seven years ago, there was, I want to say a natural or more like a very vanilla. I have some around somewhere in some box. But if you have that, hang on to that too. Things like this that you don't see very often, I have a tendency to hang on to, retired or not. Then we have two different types of twine. The first one that we have is packaged individually. Okay, and remember, big difference. And I'm not crazy over these colors. I just, it just came to me. something I should have done before. Okay, this is an Emerald Envy Solid Baker's Twine. And if you take a look at this, there's some meat to it. Maybe not too much, but there's still some meat to it. Then, remember, this is called Solid Baker's Twine right here. Then we have the Cucumber Crush Thick Baker's Twine. And this is where you're going to see the big difference in between both of these. And this is what I recommend to use if you want some presents to your knot. I need to grab a white piece of paper. That's my dog. Okay, this one's regular baker's twine. And if it's um, a whisper white and... Island Indigo, where they're combined, it's going to be this. But the thick, you can clearly tell the difference between both of them. And we're going to pull in that rope too. And there's the difference in between the thick and the rope. So this is what we have out in current. What I like to call specialty twine are the packs, the, the twin or trio combo packs. This one is from Christmas of last year and this one's from same catalog. But they're combo packs. In each roll it's going to be the same size inside. Now, what's really weird is that there's a difference in between these two. Okay, so first we have the I mean, normal size. Then we have this twin pack. 
Then we're going to go to the solid twine. I really need to. I'm, okay, I got to zoom in. My dog's driving me nuts. So I want to lay this down. Okay, regular twine combo. Thick bakers. And those that's the difference in between those three. And then here is the rope. So you have four different sizes of string to work with. Actually five if you want to throw in that thread. In the video the other day, you saw this made again with this. And I might as well put this down too, which is pretty much the equivalent to the thick baker's twine. And if you've seen the thin, I'm not going to really take that into consideration too much, but we're going to play with this. And this is where you're going to see a really good knot happen. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. A little bit about this here. This craft is, you can unwind all of those different types of twine that I just showed you and how many strands are in here? Let me count the ways. A lot. In my left hand, I'm looking at three. And in my right, I'm going to say another three. This rope breaks into three strands. And if I was to pull the thick back in, this is going to be so much fun to clean up. they're going to be the same size. So this is basically three of the thick tied together. Now one thing you cannot do and that's not going to work is only using two strands and I will show you that. Okay remember we kind of make this little loop here and then we put this across here so we take this and go under and then over, back under, over that top one there, back under, and then I'm going to pull, and you're not getting that formation, that knot we saw in my other video, which was right before this, so you don't have to go hunting for it. And I uploaded it on June 19th. So when I try and pull all this together, it's just, it's, it's not working at all. It's a hot mess. We're going to toss that aside. So I've gone ahead and cut four strands of the rope. And I really hope that they're long enough. Now when you have something this thick, the way you lay it down is going to help you with your knot. Bella. Okay, I don't have anything funky, twisty, turny there. So now I'm going to take these two and pop that on over. So I'm going to grab these two, remember, okay, under, and I'm going over this down here at the bottom, trying to keep everything all pretty and straight, 
back under over this back under this is what you want to see and then you start pulling and with these thicker ones I take my time it only takes like a second or two longer actually it's shorter to tie the bow than it is just or not not rather than just to throw it together and hope for the best. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see me play. And get it all together. And this knot is going to be awesome. And you can kind of see where you need to pull a little bit tighter this one right down there is kind of loose so if you gotta pull on one string then you gotta pull on one string the fun part is figuring out which one so you just kind of give them all a tug until you see the loose string tighten up a little bit because at this point in time it's over here which is towards the end of making the knot. And if you tug it too hard, like I just did, loosen it up. But I don't think that this is one that you want to tug really hard because you don't want your string getting all funky. This side right here. This is perfect. My right side is perfect. My left side is not. So I'm going to flip it over and make sure that that was my problem. I had this going over this way instead of this way. Because here's the other side of it. So you got to check both sides as you're doing this. And then you just play, play, play. And I am done. And that, my friends, is our nautical knot turn out very cool. It's very substantial. I am going to grab the back of this. It's a full size card front. Five and a half by four and a quarter. So I'm going to go with the four and a quarter side up top and when I lay this it's pretty substantial. So I'm going to turn it to landscape and I'll lay it out this way and it's still pretty substantial. This is a really good focal point. Great for masculine cards too. So I hope that this helped out a little bit. But what I want to show you is that rope, thick baker's twine, and look at that incredible difference between both of them. So any kind of rope accents I'm going to do It'll most likely be for a masculine card if I do something like this. I can't think of doing something like that because it's just kind of not in my head. But that is the difference. And if we were to stick this on top of a card base, let's zoom back out again. Sorry if you're getting dizzy. I'm trying to keep this like 10 minutes. You don't have quite the impact that you would with the other knot, but it looks better than this. And we'll put these two together and I have a much better knot. And there we go. So this is how you do a nautical knot. Any questions? Let me know.
I hope that you appreciate these little quick tip videos and I will catch you again next time around. If you need any Stampin' Up! supplies, you know where to find me, cindybdesigns.com. I'll have a link to my online boutique in the YouTube description, a link to these that I used, and please hit like and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. And I always appreciate you contacting me, whether it be email or through the contact form or something like that. It, it's just very nice. So I hope that you have a great day. God bless. And I will catch you the next time around where we are going to make this, which is very cool. And you open it up, and it is a notepad. I stamped all those little cute things on it. And then there's a pocket in it that I made too where you can slip things inside. And I have a little clip on the front. This is just decoration, but this is a great place to hold notes or you can just go ahead and like pop it on the inside of there. These are also fabulous t-shirt gifts to give at, I think everyone's out of school now, but they're gonna go back in six weeks anyway. And this would be like a great new teacher gift. So, now I'm really going to stop. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you again the next time. Have a great day. Bye.